Hi everyone, Josh here with Northern Frogger and this is the third installment of my species profile series and this one is all about the Dendrobates erratus. The erratus is an easy to keep medium sized dart frog and their vivid colors, variable patterns, hardiness and group compatibility combined with relatively low prices and high availability have earned the erratus a place in almost every dart frog collection. I'm going to do this species spotlight a little bit different than I've done in the past. I'm going to look at more of the entire errata species rather than focusing on one particular locale or morph. And that's mainly because while doing research for this video, um, I discovered that the subject of the different errata morphs and their import history is a lot more complicated than I realized. And I think it's interesting enough that I'm actually planning to do an entire video just kind of discussing that topic. Um, but the husbandry information in this video is going to be pretty much the same for any of the errata. Um, but I will discuss a little bit of the differences that I've noticed between the four morphs that I keep, uh, which are the Elcope, the Microspot, the Super Blue, and the Reticulated. Aratus are mainly found in Central America, in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and into northwestern Colombia. Although introduced populations are now established on a couple of the Hawaiian islands after being intentionally released there in the 1930s in a misguided attempt at biological mosquito control. They are listed as a species of least concern on the IUCN red list, although they do face threats due to habitat loss, illegal collection for the pet trade, and human spread diseases like chytrid, they do appear to be somewhat tolerant of disturbed habitats and human encroachment. And being fairly prolific means wild populations can rebound if suitable habitat remains, and widespread captive breeding success has greatly reduced the demand for illegally collected animals. Some populations are more threatened than others, but the species as a whole seems to be doing okay for now. In the wild, they prefer humid, forested habitats, mostly in lowlands or pre-montane regions, usually below 800 meters elevation, but some populations have been found as high as 1200 meters above sea level. They are considered mainly terrestrial or semi-arboreal frogs, feeding and breeding both on the forest floor and in the trees, and have been found climbing as high as 50 meters up trees to deposit their tadpoles. They are from tropical climates with distinct wet and dry seasons, although the length and intensity of the seasons varies between specific regions. In the area of Panama, where my Alcopes are from, the dry season only lasts about three months of the year, approximately from January to March, and it may rain nearly every day throughout the rest of the year. Temperatures in this region are pretty consistently between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius year round and humidity rarely drops below 70% even in the dry season. But some populations may experience longer and hotter dry seasons with a correlated period of reduced activity for frogs in those areas and populations from high altitudes will experience slightly lower average temperatures. Uh, with that in mind, I've seen some anecdotal evidence that certain species known to be on the shy side may become more visible in the vivarium when kept at lower temperatures or with increased misting frequency. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the history and origins of some of the morphs in the dart frog hobby are a bit uncertain, thanks mainly to poorly documented imports in and around the 1990s. It seems that many different types of erratus were imported together in groups and labeled simply as erratus with no location data more specific than the country of export. And the importers would then just separate these frogs based on their appearance, kind of come up with a morph name and just kind of distribute them under that name. And from what I can tell, this is probably where the micro spot and the super blue morphs originated. And I'm unsure at this point whether there are true representations of these morphs as wild populations or they're just a result of kind of artificially created lines. But as I mentioned earlier, I do plan to dive into the subject in much more depth in a future video. Despite the ambiguity surrounding the origins of some of the phenotypes, uh, the Erratus as a species is likely one of the first dart frogs bred in captivity, with records of successful breeding events at zoos in Switzerland in 1977 and the US in 1980. They started being kept by hobbyists in the 1980s, uh, kind of gained popularity through the 90s and uh, have been a mainstay of the dart frog hobby ever since. The Eurotus has a huge amount of phenotypic variation between populations, uh, but most exhibit shades of green or blue patterning on a black background, uh, with some morphs having an almost metallic sheen under the right light. But some variations can be almost yellow in color and some are kind of like white or cream or beige on a brown or reddish brown background. 
And in a lot of the morphs, the black areas of the pattern will slowly develop a bronze coloration as they get older. The patterning is highly variable between and within populations, uh, with each individual having a unique pattern. Aratus are medium-sized dart frog. Uh, males typically measure about one to one and a half inches SVL, and females are usually about a quarter inch or so longer. Uh, size does vary a bit with the morphs. Uh, among the ones I keep, the El Cope are the biggest, uh, being slightly larger than my Leucomelis, and the Reticulated are the smallest, being the smallest of any of my frogs outside of the Ranadomea. And the Micro Spot and the Super Blues are kind of in the middle, um, being about the same size as the Leucomelis. Sexing them is similar to the other dart frogs, with females being slightly larger with a more defined back arch. Uh, males do tend to have a bit wider front toe pads, but I find this method really works best with Tinctorius and can be a bit unreliable with Aratus, so it should only really be taken in conjunction with the other cues. And keep in mind these differences will only appear as the frogs reach sexual maturity, so it's pretty much impossible to determine sex visually until they are about 8 to 10 months old. And I find the degree of sexual dimorphism varies a bit between the morphs too, uh, with the bigger El Cope having a much more obvious size difference between the males and females, uh, while the difference are somewhat minimized in the smaller reticulated, um, so that morph is actually a bit tougher to accurately sex even when they are adults. The husbandry of Aratus is going to be broadly similar across the various morphs, and in fact most dart frogs are going to share the same basic husbandry. So if you've seen my other species profile videos already, uh, much of the following should sound pretty familiar. Aratus, like all dart frogs, are best kept in a planted bioactive avarium. The enclosure size should provide a minimum of 10 gallons per frog, uh, but bigger is always appreciated and they will use all the space you provide. A uh, bioactive avarium is seeded with microfauna such as springtails and isopods which provide a secondary food source for the frogs while they kind of help break down the frog waste and other debris and turn it into fertilizer for the plants. And the plants in turn provide cover and climbing areas for the frogs while helping to increase and maintain humidity. And speaking of humidity, uh, humidity should never be allowed to drop below 70% uh, but I personally aim for actually about 80% or so. This can be achieved by daily misting. Uh, you can also use foggers and water features to help keep the humidity up, but I would still recommend a daily misting schedule, and I highly recommend getting an automated misting setup to help ensure consistent humidity. Ideal temperatures for Aratus are going to be in the low 20s Celsius or low 70s Fahrenheit, and morphs from high elevation populations will appreciate temps at the lower end of that range. Higher temperatures may result in reduced activity levels for many morphs, and temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit can be dangerous or fatal. Um, a bit of a temperature drop at night is okay too, and uh, some would say that it may even be beneficial. Um, and these temperature requirements mean that they can be maintained in most homes without any supplemental heating. And they do not need any UV lighting either as long as you're providing proper dietary supplementation. And their staple diet should consist of mostly flightless fruit flies, uh, just like most dart frogs. Um, the froglets of Aratus can usually take Melanogaster right away, although sometimes for the smaller morphs it can be helpful to supplement with springtails in the beginning. And pretty much all the morphs will be able to take Hydei as they get bigger, um, but I find they will all still happily take Melanogaster at any age. And the smaller reticulated ones seem to prefer the smaller flies even as adults. And just make sure you're dusting all your flies with a quality vitamin and mineral supplement at every feeding. Dirt frogs are long-lived frogs and Aratus are no exception. Uh, they can live for up to 20 years in captivity if cared for properly, although 12 to 15 years is probably more typical. And while they are not poisonous in captivity, they should not be handled to avoid stress or damage to the frogs. Like all dart frogs, Aratus are diurnal, although some morphs tend to be more bold and active than others. Among the ones I keep, the El Cope and Microspot are the boldest, uh, kind of rivaling the Leucomelis in terms of visibility, while the Super Blue and Reticulated are noticeably shyer, probably just slightly more bold than most of my thumbnails. The Aratus are mainly considered a terrestrial frog, although some sources classify them as semi-arboreal, uh, which I would tend to agree with based on how much they seem to climb in my vivariums. They can be housed successfully in both horizontally or vertically oriented vivariums, and they will make full use of whatever space is provided. Uh, they tend to display little to no territorial aggression in captivity, uh, which makes them an excellent choice to keep in groups. 
And they are known as one of the most prolific dart frogs for good reason because they will breed readily in captivity in pairs or groups. Although sometimes females may eat each other's eggs. And their ease of breeding has helped make them one of the most common and affordable frogs in the hobby. With my frogs I find they lay eggs pretty much weekly with the larger morphs tending to lay bigger clutches. Uh, my reticulateds usually lay about four to six eggs per clutch uh, but my biggest Alcope female has laid as many as 11 eggs in a clutch. Um, although about six to eight is a lot more typical. Uh, the males have a very soft buzzing call that's pretty similar to the Tinctorius, uh, so they would make an excellent choice if you were concerned about uh, noise levels if you live in an apartment or something. And they will make use of petri dish and coconut hut breeding sites if you provide them, but they will also readily lay eggs on leaves of plants or among the leaf litter on the floor of the vivarium. And wild erotus in Hawaii have even been observed using broken beer bottles and old cans as breeding sites. Uh, so they're really not too picky about where they're breeding. And development times are going to be similar to the other dart frogs with eggs hatching in about two weeks and then the tadpoles taking about three months to develop. And I find they do seem to mature a bit faster than the other gender babies I keep. Um, and many will start to exhibit sexual dimorphism and show courtship behavior at about eight to ten months. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you have any questions or comments or I made any mistakes or overlooked anything in this video, please let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video or learned anything from it, please hit that like button. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And until next time, happy frogging.